Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people seem to think that they can do what they want, when they want, and nobody else matters. And in this episode, Karens are causing trouble again, guys. So we've got Karens stealing people's shopping carts, trespassers who yell at the homeowner for kicking them out, and OP asks for some advice because the girlfriend he's dating is ultra rich and her parents hate him. That's always fun, right? I hope you enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too hard, and as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So my wife has a cousin who we'll call Karen. Karen's mom and stepdad are very successful doctors, with 40 acres of land and a huge house. Karen's always been a rich, spoiled brat, so it's no surprise that Karen's child, Stacy, is also a spoiled brat. One day, I had just laid my daughter down for a nap when Karen called to ask if she could bring Stacy over for a playdate. My daughter was notorious for taking long naps, and I told them it wasn't the best time. Well, Karen came over anyways, telling me at the door that they'll just come inside my house and wait for my daughter to wake up. And I'm thinking, uh, what? So they barge in before I could refuse them, and we make light conversation. Stacy busies herself with my daughter's toys, while I sit through Karen complaining about her latest fight with her husband, over buying a Porsche or BMW for their next vehicle. Rich people, right? So after 40 minutes of small talk, I finally say, well, I don't think my daughter's waking up anytime soon, so maybe we should do this another day. Hearing me say that, Karen looks at her phone, and she shrugs and says, Well, we've been here this long, we might as well wait. I didn't drive all this way just to go home after talking to you. I then insist that my daughter would be sleeping for a while longer, and Stacy started complaining about being hungry. I push the issue of them leaving before Karen could ask me to feed her kid. Karen finally agreed to leave, and this is where the real trouble begins. Stacy had been playing with a set of colorful ponies that my daughter was very fond of, and when Karen told her to get ready to leave, Stacy continued to clutch the horses. Karen guides her to the door, horses in hand, and I had to stop them. I basically say, hey sweetie, could you give me my daughter's horses before you go? At that, Stacy just held them tighter and turned away from me screaming, no! I then looked at Karen, who was just watching the exchange with no intention of getting involved. So I continued to coax Stacy into giving me the horses as nicely as I could. At that, Stacy gets even more upset and she turns further away from me the more I spoke. So I finally straightened up, gestured towards her while staring at Karen as a way of silently demanding help. Karen just sighs and says, Ugh, Stacy, could you leave daughter's toys here? Stacy responds, But mommy, I like them. Let me take them home. Karen then just looks at me and she shrugs and says, Well, I tried. I don't think she's gonna let them go, so maybe you should just get new ones for your daughter and let my daughter have these. Now, I had to literally bite my tongue to keep from lashing out at Karen at that moment. Taking hold of the horses with one hand, I gently informed Stacy that I would be taking them, as the toys do not belong to her. Of course, Stacy throws a tantrum and she yells no over and over again while trying to tear them away from my grasp. I firmly and smoothly took them away from her arms. Now it wasn't a yank, I was trying to be nice the whole time, even though I wanted to swat that entitled tushy and stick her nose in the corner. Stacy then starts wailing like I smacked her in the face, and Karen just glares at me, swooping her child into her arms and screaming, Great! See what you did? She's gonna be like this all the way home now, thanks! You should have just let her have the damn pony! At that, I just shrugged as Karen cooed at Stacy to get her to stop screaming. I had enough at this point, and I basically told Karen, then you should probably take her home then, before she wakes up my daughter. And no, I'm not just gonna give your daughter something that belongs to my daughter. Karen then screams, you should have just let her keep the damn horses. Basically repeating what she said before, while giving me a glare, and doing the dance of the desperate parent. I then opened the door for her and gestured towards it saying, They belong to my daughter. You can get some for Stacy yourself. Karen left grumbling about me being selfish, with Stacy still screaming in her arms. My daughter slept for another hour, and in that time, I got a phone call from my wife asking what happened. Apparently, Karen texted the whole family that I tortured Stacy and that I'm an adult bully. Now, my wife knew that none of that was true, and she wanted the real story. Things have kind of smoothed over with her family now, but every time Karen tries her entitled attitude with anyone, little fights break out all over again because I'm the only one who will call her out. 
Holy cow, right? Like, like you'd think that being that wealthy, at the very least, Karen could have offered to buy the toys off of OP. But her just wanting OP to give up his daughter's toy saying, I don't think she's gonna let them go, maybe you should get new ones for your daughter. Like, wow, this is why her daughter's a brat and that she thinks she can always have what she wants. All I can say is Karen really needs to fix her spoiled daughter because, oh man, when Stacy becomes a teenager and acts like that, there might be police and juvie involved. Because we all know what happens to adult Karens who act like this, right? They go straight to jail. So, a week ago, a construction company that I occasionally work for got a contract to repair a bridge over an exit of a highway. They contacted me to be on site, to help out as a first aider. We started last Monday, and quickly found out that for coffee and lunch, somebody would have to go 3 kilometers away to the nearest rest stop, where a cafe and the Golden Arches are. Usually, either me or the foreman would go during the break with all the orders. Today was my turn. We had to break early because the crew had to work near a high voltage pylon, and we were waiting for the power company. So I take everyone's order, jump in my car, and drive to the rest stop. Now, due to force of habit, I'm still wearing my reflective vest, with first aid with black letters on the back, and I have my hard hat with me. Again, from force of habit. So as I'm waiting in line for the golden arches, the foreman calls me to say that there was a mix-up with the paperwork for temporarily cutting the power from the pylon so we were shutting down for the day. The orders are cancelled, but I decide to grab a coffee and relax a bit before heading home. I grab my coffee and head to the outside tables. Now, in order to go to the patio, I have to pass the fast food tables. And that's when I hear the dreaded throat clearing and a shrill voice saying, Excuse me? Now I just keep walking, and that's when I hear it again, louder this time, and then a hand grabbing my arm. I just turn around and look at her arm, and she gets the hint and removes it. The woman's in her late 40s, early 50s, with a classic haircut associated with Karen's. The woman says to me, where's my order? I say to her, honestly, I have no idea. At that she says, what? I placed it 10 minutes ago. Is nobody gonna bring it to me? The woman starts to get angry, and I say, Sorry, but you should really talk to an employee. I'm on my way out. That's when I try to leave, and she grabs my arm again. I just turn around, and I'm getting a bit angry. Karen then tells me, Go up there and check my order for me. It's number 190. And then bring it to me. She says that while still holding on to me. I say to her, hey, remove your hand from my arm and stop touching me. The woman complies and I do walk away, but Karen follows me outside. The whole time, she's screaming, that's no way to treat a customer. She then screams for the manager. Well, speak of the devil and he will appear. The manager of McDonald's steps outside to see what the commotion's all about. At the same time, my foreman had the same idea as me, and he just steps onto the patio. He then sees what's happening and he makes a beeline to me and asks what happened. The manager's trying to calm Karen down to no avail. Karen just keeps screaming and pointing at me saying, He was rude to me. He won't bring me my food. Do something. The manager then looks at me and then back at Karen and says, Madam, I would love to help you, but since he's not my employee, I can't. He doesn't have to bring you any food. Karen just looks at us and then at the manager and then stomped off. The foreman got a coffee and we chilled for a bit before heading home. So apparently to this woman, as long as you're dressed as an employee, you will have to obey her. It doesn't matter where you work. And guys, let me know how many of you would have gotten totally petty at that point and said, yes ma'am, to the rude Karen and just grabbed her order and just disappeared from McDonald's. So my house sits on a big plot of land where the back faces a forested area. I have the front of my property fenced off with a large gate to the main driveway and a smaller wood and wire farm style fence stretching down the width of my property that faces the road. The width has a similar small fence until it hits the forested area. Most of the forest is sugar maple, and I take full advantage of that and harvest maple sugar. And in my backyard, I have several game traps set up, mostly for rabbits, and a large area for a vegetable garden. Well, today, I'm sitting in my house when all of a sudden I hear screaming and laughing coming from my backyard. I also want to note that I have no trespassing signs posted all over my property, all around the border. So I go outside to see what's going on, and sure enough, there's three kids in my backyard taking shots with a slingshot on cans propped up against my large shed near my garden. I walk towards the kids and tell them it's time to go, that it's private property and they're gonna damage my shed as they were pelting it with metal balls. 
the kids reluctantly leave. And about an hour later, I get a knock at the door from the father. The man had nothing nice to say. He just told me that I had no right to tell his kids to leave. That technically, it's all public land if they can access it. And if they can access it, they can use it. Again, I have fences around my property with no trespassing signs. I told him this, that his kids technically access my land by hopping my fence, aka trespassing. Also, I have a front gate that was closed, and this guy jumped my fence, walked up the long driveway to my house to knock on my door to yell at me. I told the guy to leave, and that he and his kids were very lucky that my guard dogs were not out at the time as they're very protective of my property. The guy then told me to shut up and to let him talk to the man of the house, and that his kids will use the property any time they want. I told him that my husband wasn't home at the time, he was out, but that he would get the same answer from the man of the house. I then decide to show him why it's a bad idea to come onto my property. I just opened my big wooden door and told him that when my husband isn't home, that these are the men of the house and they will do whatever it takes to protect me and my property. Revealing my two 160-pound King Shepherds and my 120-pound Bull Mastiff just sitting there growling, looking super pissed. Well, the guy looked pretty scared and he decided to leave. But before he did, he called me a bitch and then flipped me off. But I don't think he or his kids will come back anytime soon. Guys, I freaking love this post so much. And I love how OP was like, my husband's not home at the moment, but these three dogs are. Would you care to ask them if you can be on their property? Like, that is absolutely mind-boggling how people think that they can just let their kids play on other people's properties. Not only that, but then have the audacity to come yell at the homeowner when their kids are kicked out. I'll just never understand the thought process of some people. Like, clearly some people think it's okay to do what they want. So my girlfriend and I have been together three years. 99% of the time, we're great. She's funny, smart, and we have a lot of shared interests. But every time we visit her family, I just start doubting everything. Her family is very wealthy, which by itself is not a bad thing. But they're also very fixated on being rich, and they have the habit of placing the monetary value of things and people over anything else. I myself come from a very middle class background. I have a good education and a decent career that I really enjoy, but I'm definitely not rich. And because of this, they view me as her loser boyfriend. For example, yesterday, we made the two-hour drive to her parents' house in my Honda sedan. When we got there, her mom immediately orders me to park my car behind the house so the neighbors wouldn't see that piece of junk in front of their house. Her mom was absolutely furious that we didn't bring girlfriend's Land Rover which they bought for her as a birthday gift this year. My girlfriend doesn't like to drive on long trips, and I'm not allowed to drive the Land Rover, which is a rule set by her parents, so we brought my Honda. Also, girlfriend's dad has never spoken to me directly. Even when my girlfriend introduced me the first time, he just turns to her and he immediately said, what does he do? Does he make a lot of money? So we went inside the house and I gave her dad the usual, hi, how are you? Good to see you. And he just gave me the usual disinterested glance. One more example. Last year, I made the mistake of bringing a bottle of wine to dinner. It was a $25 bottle, which was pricey for me, and I even had the wine store lady help me pick it out. Girlfriend's mom told me to put it in the kitchen, and they didn't open it while we were there. She later admitted to my girlfriend that they re-gifted it to their housekeeper because they don't drink, quote, gas station hooch, as it's not good for drinking. With that said, we managed to get through the day yesterday without much drama, except the car thing, which I'd normally consider a win. But today, I kept thinking about the whole situation with her family, and I'm wondering if I'm willing to deal with these people the rest of my life. Girlfriend and I have tossed around the possibility of getting married more than once, but I know they'll never accept me. If we do get married, I'll have to see them a lot more than once a year, and I can't stand their entitled, holier-than-thou attitudes. My girlfriend's given up trying to defend me to her parents, and she just ignores their nitpicking most of the time. But I can tell it bothers her too. They bankroll a big chunk of her lifestyle, and I think she's worried that they'll cut her off if she pushes too hard, as they have threatened to do so over other things. So not to sound like a complete jerk, but am I wasting my time? My girlfriend always tells me that she doesn't care what her family thinks, but I'm not sure that's true. She always tries to downplay how crappy they are to me but I know that I'll never be good enough for them. 
even if I'm good enough for her, so is this relationship doomed? Update. So Thursday while at work, I got the dreaded we need to talk text, and it was all caps, and I was like, well, here it comes. We talked for a long time Thursday nights, and she says she knows her parents treat people like garbage, and that they control her and her siblings with money. It's partially a cultural thing, according to her. My girlfriend was born and raised in the US, but her parents grew up rich in a different country, and they moved here a long time ago. She said that they've had a hard time assimilating with upper-class Americans, and they flaunt their wealth because they're socially insecure. Girlfriend also implied that that kind of behavior was a lot more acceptable in their home country, and they never changed. On top of that, girlfriend's mom is emotionally and physically abusive. Girlfriend says that she's still afraid of her mom, and she has a hard time standing up to her. She also got very little affection from her parents growing up. It seems that that was all replaced with material things. So to her, being cut off from her family financially is the same thing as being cut off emotionally. All that being said, girlfriend does not expect me to visit her parents again. We talked, and she was really hurt when I brought up that I was potentially wasting my time with her as her parents will never accept me, but I apologized. She says it doesn't matter what her parents think. I then asked her about maybe letting her parents cut her off financially and living on her own. It wouldn't mean she has to go no contact, but their relationship would be based on something other than money. We've been talking about moving in together for a while now, and she actually suggested that she move out of her townhouse that her parents pay for into my apartment, and I'm totally fine with this. We've been together three years, and I think we would have moved in together a while ago if her parents weren't so against it. She's really nervous about being on her own financially, but she's willing to try it. No one can change their habits overnight. The plan for now is to split the cost of rent and utilities, and she's asked me to put her on an allowance for spending her own money. She's also given me her credit cards that her parents pay for and told me to hide them. Now, it is weird to me to have this much control over another person's finances. We're going to give it until my lease is up in March, and then, assuming this all works out, we'll look for a place to officially live together. She isn't going to tell her parents right away, but she promised that she will before March. Guys, all I can say is I hope OP and his girlfriend are doing really well. And I really do wonder if things did work out in the end. But guys, it's just wild to me that in the three years that OP and his girlfriend have been together, like, the parents won't even talk to him. And that after three years, the mom is still ashamed of what others think and forces him to hide his car when he's over. Like, that to me is just crazy. And I can only imagine the parents having a heart attack when their daughter finally tells them that she wants to be financially independent and that they can't control her anymore. But yeah, hopefully it does work out. My friends, what would you do if you're in OP situation? And seriously, let me know in the comments if you've ever dated anyone whose parents have had unreasonably high standards, like what OP is dealing with. So this happened a few days ago, and honestly, I'm still fuming thinking about it. The nerve of some people. Sundays are usually my shopping days, so I head to my local supermarket, grabbed a cart from the parking lot, and went into the store. I got some vegetables, bananas, meats, cereal, etc. I'm letting you know what I grabbed to clearly illustrate that my shopping cart was far from empty. It was about half full, actually. That being said, I left my cart four steps away from me while I was choosing what packet of burger buns to grab. But I heard my cart starting to move. Turning around, it's a lady who we'll call Karen. And I'll admit, she didn't have the can I speak to the manager haircut, but she had very beautiful hair. I also noticed that she had a kid, maybe a year or two, sitting in my cart. The cart had my groceries and my purse in it. So I say to her, oh sorry, but that's my shopping cart. I think there must have been a mix-up. At that, Karen says, oh, no it's not. To which I reply, oh, well, if it was in the way, I'm sorry, I'll move it. The next thing she says still makes me angry thinking about it. Karen then says, oh, it wasn't in the way at all, but I needed a shopping cart since I'm tired of carrying my kid. I'm lucky your cart was so close. Hearing that, I hesitate and say, okay, understandable, but those are my groceries and that is my purse. Karen then hands me my purse, and in my mind, I thought everything would be fine now, but I was wrong. Karen then says, okay, you have your purse now. Any other personal belongings in this cart? Because I'm just gonna take it off your hands. At that, I respond, uh, no, but I have a problem with you taking the cart since it has my groceries. She then said, listen, you don't have a baby with you. Grocery carts are for mothers like me. You need to get a damn basket. 
I respond, no, grocery carts are for people that buy several things and don't have enough hands to carry them. They are for convenience. Give me back my cart and get your own. There's a lot of them in the parking lots or close to the entrance. At that, Karen shrieks, so go and get one for yourself. Did you not hear that I'm tired? You try holding 30 pounds walking around the store. My baby is heavy. She then proceeds to push my cart away with my groceries. I was dumbfounded for a few seconds, but decided to not pursue her because I didn't want to start an argument with her. I just wanted to get out as quick as I can. So now, I had to return and get another cart and then grab my groceries all over again. It wasn't much, thankfully, as I just started, but I told the security guard near the door about the cart-stealing mom. In the end, my shopping trip was extended by an extra half an hour, as the line to the deli meets was really long. I end up finding the bag of my original sliced ham right beside the muffins, so Karen didn't even bother to bring it back to the deli, or had common sense to leave it in a fridge somewhere. I wish I could say that they detained that Karen, or that she was stuck in the cashier line and then her card was declined, but I didn't see her again, and honestly, I hope I never have to. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode. Another one where Karens are getting arrested. So yeah, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.